and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Good morning, church. Good morning. Welcome to worship in person and online at Hey Good this morning. My name is Beth Givens. I'm the pastor here at Hey Good. I am joined in worship leadership today by Michael Rock, Joan Pye, and our chancel choir and tech team. If this is your first time with us today, we especially welcome you to worship. There are in your pew racks connect cards, and we encourage you to get one of those and to either scan the QR code or to write on the reverse of it. If you scan the QR code, you'll go to our connect form where you can learn a little bit more um, about us. Um, and if you want to write on it, you can place it out in the offering bowl that is in the middle of the lobby. We would learn, love to learn a little bit more about you. You can learn more about us um, by subscribing to our weekly email. There are some printed copies of that available out in the lobby. Um, you can also connect with us on our website, which is a wonderful source of information. Registration is open for our women's retreat that will be held here on Saturday, June 3rd. You can find more about that in our weekly email and on the events page of our website. Our guest facilitator is Amber Lee Gray, who is um, a clergy person from the Mississippi Conference. Um, Amber Lee is also our graphic designer here at um, Haygood and works for us remotely, so it'll be great to meet her in person. And our theme for that retreat is soul care. Happy Mother's Day to all of the moms out there. We give thanks for all of the ways that you care for your children and for um, all of those of us who mother other people as well. Um, today, a couple of things to let you know about. Our United Methodist Women are um, having a bake sale in the office hallway, um, and they're, they're selling until they're sold out, says Marsha. Um, who isn't even here. She's probably selling. Um, and um, we are also packing backpacks um, for folks who have food insecurity um, in our local schools. We're going to be doing that, <coughs> excuse me, in the social hall immediately after um, our 930 worship today. So we encourage you to go over and help us out with that mission project. Today we continue an Easter season worship series called Acts of God, which looks at how the earliest Christian communities formed the challenges that they faced and the ways that they grew stronger as a community of faith. Today we're taking a look at the Apostle Paul's speech to a completely non-Jewish audience in the city of Athens and see what he might teach us about drawing closer to God. As we prepare now to move into worship, I invite you to take a couple of moments and just center yourself in this space. Take a couple of deep breaths, feel the pew that is supporting you, Sense the people that are around you gathering for worship. Breathe in God's Holy Spirit and let go of all that is worrying you as we turn to God in worship. Please stand as you are able and join me in the invitation to worship. We gather together in the presence of God, the Lord of heaven and earth. The creator of our world and everything in it. The one who gave us life and breath. The one who is never far away from any of us. The one in whom we live and move and have our being. Let's worship God together. Please remain standing as we sing our praise. Immortal, invisible, God only wise.
children to come join me at the front for a time with children. everybody. How are you? Pretty good. It's starting to actually feel like summer and um, yeah, that's pretty, pretty epic, right? We had a good summer thunderstorm last night at my house. Um, so I wanted to make a, a list today in our heads of all the places that kids go. So you go, where are you right now? You go to church, okay? You go to Bush Gardens to have fun. You go to the playground to have fun. The pool, your house, the beach. Anybody go to school? Yeah. yeah. The ice cream shop, school, the ice cream shop. They don't want to go to school, but they do go there. Uh, do you ever go to relatives' houses? Yeah. Okay, like friends' houses, relatives' houses. You go, you go on the bus, right? Okay. So today I want to talk about how God is with us everywhere. You know, it's easy for us to feel like when we come to church, we're especially close to God, right? But is God, does God live in these walls? Yes. Yes, and I have a friend who always says, yes, and God lives everywhere. That's right. So is there any place you can go where you won't find God? No. no. So we are going to hear a story in worship this morning about the Apostle Paul. And he goes to the city of Athens in ancient Greece. Have any of you guys studied ancient Greece? A few of you? Okay. So, so do you know anything about the Athenians? What, what do you remember about them? What kind of gods do they worship? Athena, Athena is one of them, right? And, and, and Zeus. And, like, we could go on and on and on, right? Percy Jackson is one of my favorite book series. So, just saying. If you want to know about, about the Greek gods and goddesses and Roman, Percy Jackson series. It's our pro tip for you, right? Um, so, but they, but Paul, so Paul, who is a follower of Jesus, walks into Athens and he sees all of these statues of Athena and Zeus and Mars and all these people, Ares, all of them. And he's kind of like, hmm, this is, this is really different. And then he sees this statue and the inscription is to an unknown God. And he thinks, okay, I can work with that. So he starts talking to the Athenians about who this unknown God is and starts telling them about our God, right? The, the God who created heaven and earth. And, and so, God, so Paul used that. And I think in the same way sometimes when we're in the world, when we're at the ice cream shop or at the beach or at school, and, and we notice something and we think, huh, that reminds me of God we can maybe tell a friend about it. Like this morning, I will, I will say that as I was walking from this building over to um, the chapel to lead worship earlier this morning, I heard all kinds of birds singing in the trees. And I just stopped for a moment and thought, oh, there's God. So I invite you to look at all the places where you are this week and see if you notice that God is there. Can we pray together? Can you bow your heads and put your hands together and Congregation, you can join us, and folks online, you can join us too. Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for being everywhere. For being everywhere. There is nowhere, there is nowhere we can't find you. We can't find you. Amen. 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 And have you guys told your moms Happy Mother's Day? <coughs> okay, good. Pro tip, don't forget. <laughs> we are. Before the kids go to children's church, see I hadn't turned the page, Willow has an announcement she would like to share with us. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, good morning. Fiona has hey a good. My name is Willow and I'm 10 years old. Hey good is looking for volunteers like you to participate in summer serve. Summer serve is a way to get involved this summer in our kids program here at Hey good. We need volunteers to help lead kids like me at the 9.30 service 
and 1045 service in July and August. You can volunteer for just one day, no experience required. Materials will be provided. Sign up sheets are in the lobby. Come get involved and help kids like me become the Haggard's next generation of Christian leaders. Have you been waiting for a sign to, hear, to get more involved here at Haggard? Have you been waiting on a sign to volunteer? Well, this is your sign. <laughs> we hope you'll consider volunteering. Thank you, Willow. Beautifully done. This morning's New Testament reading comes from Acts 17, 22 through 31. So Paul took a stand in the open space at the Oropagus and laid, out, laid it out for them. It is plain to see that you Athenians take your religion seriously. When I arrived here the other day, I was fascinated with all the shrines I came across, and then I found one inscribed, to the God nobody knows. I'm here to introduce you to this God so you can worship intelligently, know who you're dealing with. The God who made the world and everything in it, this master of sky and land, doesn't live in custom-made shrines or need the human race to run errands for him, and he couldn't take, as if he couldn't take care of himself, he makes the creatures, the creatures don't make him. Starting from scratch, he made the entire human race and made the earth hospitable with plenty of time and space for living so we could seek after God and not just grope around in the dark, but actually find him. He doesn't play hide and seek with us. He's not remote, he's near. We live and move in him, can't get away from him. One of your poets said it well, we are the God created. Well, if we are the God created, it doesn't make a lot of sense to think we could hire a sculptor to chisel God out of stone for us, does it? God overlooks it as long as you don't know any better, but that time has passed. The unknown is now known, and he's calling for a radical life change. He has set a day when the entire human race will be judged and everything set right. And he has already appointed the judge, confirming him before everyone by raising him from the dead. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Will you join your hearts in prayer with mine? Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, take these words of scripture that Mike has shared Take the words that I now speak. Take the meditations of our minds and hearts. And by the power of your spirit at work in us, weave all of this together so that we might look more like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Way back in 2018, which because of the pandemic feels like a decade ago, not five years, the University of Virginia men's basketball team had a stunning buzzer beater win against Louisville that inspired this t-shirt that they're working on getting on screen. It was in um, the last 0.9 seconds of the game, I don't know if anyone remembers it, but there were four points that the Cavaliers were down and five seconds left and they ended up winning the game. It was a stunning turn of events. And it, it inspired a t-shirt that said, a lot can happen in 0.9 seconds. Well, a lot can happen in 11 chapters. A stunning turn of events. When we left Paul last week, his name was Saul and he was holding the coats of the Jewish religious leaders while they stoned Stephen for testifying 
about Jesus. Eleven chapters later in the same book, Saul has now become Paul and has been converted to Christianity, and we encounter Paul in Athens witnessing to a thoroughly non-Jewish culture, we might even say a thoroughly secular culture. The Christ movement has now pushed beyond the boundaries of a movement within Jewish circles, and Paul's missionary journeys have expanded the movement across the water into the Gentile or the non-Jewish territories. This is the Book of Acts' only major record of an address to a thoroughly pagan audience. And it helps us, nearly 2,000 years later, think about how we meet God. Paul is speaking from the Areopagus, also known as Mars Hill, the center of Athenian civic life. Your studies of ancient Greece may have been a little bit longer ago than some of our kids, but you likely remember with me that Athens was a scholarly center. It was also the center of a religion that was focused around many gods and goddesses. Paul saw many idols in Athens. Athena, Apollo, Aphrodite, Ares, that's just a few of the A's. Paul was likely inclined to talk about the history of the faith using characters like Moses and King David and Jesus and his disciples or using the jargon of the movement like prophets and sin crucified and resurrected. However, invoking language that was so foreign to the Athenians was not the best place to start. Paul starts by meeting them where they are. He compliments their religiosity. After all, there are lots of idols and statues around town. Paul lifts up the altar that he has found, which is inscribed to an unknown god, that seems like sort of an insurance policy in case they forgot anyone. He then lifts up the concepts that are held in common between the Athenians and the Christians, like a creator who is holy and separate from human hands. And finally, he works his way around to the resurrection. And there, some, some say, I'm done, I'm out of here, but others stay to hear more about this resurrected Lord. And in this speech, Paul offers an important reminder for us in the church today. It is easy for us to feel like we know God. We have thousands of years, doctrine, and liturgy, and song that explain God. But an active faith is not simply knowing about God. An active faith is about finding God in our lives. As one commentator on the passage writes, a human relationship with God then is not about relating to a far off presence, nor is it about relating to a merely interior one, nor is it a matter of luring God to come closer. If we take Paul's speech at Mars Hill seriously, God is already there, already here. It's we who need to become more present and attentive. The divine life is swirling in and through and around all things all the time, all the way out to the edges of creation and beyond. How then do we meet God in our daily lives? Personal devotion, meditating on scripture, prayer, Fasting and public worship, these are, these are some of the classic spiritual disciplines with which many people are familiar. What I have come to understand, though, is that it is not so much the practice itself which is important. Rather, it is our posture, our attitude, our approach to that practice that are crucial to whether it will help us meet God. 
Roger Owens, who is a professor at Pittsburgh Theological Seminary, writes in his wonderful book, Everyday Contemplative, that we live in a culture with a bias towards action. And that can seep into our relationship with God. Does that make sense? We, we feel like we need to do all the work. We need to be the fixers, the doers, the actors. When instead, in our lives of faith, the work we need to do is to prepare ourselves so that God can work, so that we can be taken in to God's own being. Roger offers the illustration of the moment when babies are born. Good reminder on this Mother's Day. For about nine months, the child enjoyed a warm bath, muted light, and the calming rhythm of the mother's heartbeat. And at birth, that disappears. And the infant naturally responds with a wail and flailing arms. And then, if everything goes well in the delivery room, after a few moments of care, the infant is placed back on the mother's chest is warm and held and once again hears the familiar heartbeat. Roger writes, at this point, the baby is thinking, it worked. All that crying and screaming, all the wriggling and wailing, it worked. It got me back where I belong, back to the heartbeat of love, back home. I'm going to do this the rest of my life. But we know better, don't we? It wasn't the crying and the screaming and the action of the baby that got the baby there. She had to be taken. She had to be lifted and carried. There was no other way. Our truest home is next to the heartbeat of God. Not in some distant heavenly future, but right now. That's not a destination that we can choose and then enter it into our GPS and plot a course there by way of adopting practices of prayer and ways of life that will propel us to that final destination. As soon as it becomes a destination that we are determined to reach by our own effort and ingenuity, we're headed in the wrong direction. But we can be taken. We can be loved into that place. We can be lifted and carried by our Savior. And the greatest challenge of the spiritual life is to allow ourselves to be taken, to be loved all the way to our truest home. In the rest of his book, Roger outlines the characteristics of a posture that allow us to be taken by God. Those include longing, Attention, patience, playfulness, vulnerability, non-judgment, and freedom. If you, too, are interested in this journey of being taken into the arms of God, I invite you to pick just one of those characteristics as a beginning place and think about how can I deepen this in my life? How can I become more longing for God, more attentive, more patient, more playful, more vulnerable, more non-judgmental, more free? How can I do just one of those things that might let God take me deeper? I wonder if that day in Athens, Paul's words were the first step for a few of those who heard him on that journey to the heartbeat of God. Like them, God is waiting to take us closer. May we release our tendency to work hard to get to Christ and move into a more open and receptive place that allows God to take us close. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to stand as you are able as we sing our response. It's 2166 in the paperback, The Faith We Sing, or on screen, a song that reminds us of how Christ surrounds us.
Now let me invite you to join us as we affirm our faith together using a statement of faith of the United Church of Canada, 883 in your hymnals or on screen. Will you join me as we affirm our faith together? We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. It has been a um, busy weekend at Hey Good, a weekend when we have seen the way that God used the gifts, uses the gifts of this congregation in many ways. Yesterday, our United, Method our United Women in Faith, formerly United Methodist Women, held their spring tea. It was a wonderful event for fellowship and sharing for all. Uh, I am told that behind the scenes, Scenes, there was an equally wonderful number of United Methodist men who were at work and having their own kind of fun helping out. Your gifts made that fellowship deepen. We also celebrated with our Virginia Wesleyan family um, yesterday, or Friday and yesterday, uh, baccalaureate and graduation for our students. Um, Kenneth Henry, one of our active students um, here at Hey Good, who has worked in our preschool and, and been a part of our 1045 service, gave the senior address on Friday night, and it was just a joy to share with students um, in that milestone in their lives. And then yesterday afternoon, after that concluded, our confirmands had time with Bishop Sue Hoppert Johnson, uh, our bishop here in Virginia, who was here um, for graduation, and our confirmands were able to spend time with her and ask her, what does it mean to be a bishop anyway? How do you bish? Um, so it was a great time um, uh, to be together and to see how it is that our gifts are making a difference in so many ways. You may give financial gifts to Hey Good online in the offering bowl that is in the lobby or by mailing a check to us. Our choir continues us in our worship.
as we share congregational joys and concerns, you will note that Laverne Kingsley is back in the choir. <laughs> after many weeks after a fall, we are so glad she is back. We are also, we were overjoyed this morning. Keith Best joined us to uh, accompany our 8.30 service, and you'll be seeing Keith um, a little bit this summer uh, in this service uh, as well. So grateful for healing for those folks. And we want to keep in our prayers Brenda Tickle's son, David, who was hospitalized last <clears throat> night. Let us turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord of heaven and earth, we turn to you in praise. You have given us life and breath and have created us with hearts that seek you. And we do reach for you, knowing that you are not far from us and are waiting to take us. Closer. Lord of heaven and earth, we turn to you in gratitude for the goodness that fills our lives, for the opportunities to learn about you and who you are calling us to be, and for the joys that lift our spirits and lighten our mood. Thank you for the healing that Laverne and Keith are experiencing. We thank you for all who celebrated graduations at Virginia Wesleyan University yesterday and for graduations throughout our community. On this Mother's Day, we give thanks for our mothers, for those who have mothered us in so many different ways. We also pray for those for whom this is a day that is touched by grief, or loss, or regret, and we pray for your care for them. Lord of heaven and earth, we turn to you in concern for those we know are struggling. We pray for those who are hospitalized, especially David. We pray for those who are mourning the loss a dear loved one, especially Ella and Audrey Dembitz. We pray for those who are burdened with the challenges of care, caring for those who are ill, who are broken, We pray for those who are seeking employment, those who are deeply discouraged and all in distress. As our public health emergency for COVID ended this week, oh God, we pause to pray for the millions of lives lost. The millions of lives transformed. We give you thanks for the advances of science, for the ways that you made a way in the darkest of days. But we continue to pray for the heavy weight that we bear as a world as a result of this trauma. Continue to help us heal, oh God. We pray this day for this church and the children in our families, in our church, and in our neighborhood. And we ask you to help us be a beacon of light to them, to keep them safe to teach them about your love and your grace. All of these prayers and those that are on our individual hearts, we lift to you in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'll invite you to stand as you're able as we sing our commitment. Number 152 in your hymnals are on screen. I sing the almighty power of God. We are singing it to an alternate tune that is familiar to you. Will you stand as you're able? <clears throat> present there and inviting us, beckoning us, taking us closer to his heart. May the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you and live through you this day and always. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 